Welcome to another episode of quantum computing. In this episode, we are going to delve into quantum measurement. But first, let's understand what measurement really means. Before exploring measurement, it's crucial to grasp the concept of an observable. An observable is a quantity or a real number that can be measured through interaction with the external world. Observing isn't limited to our eyes. It involves using measurement devices and instruments. For instance, we can measure the distance of an object like a ball from a reference point such as a wall. We can also measure its velocity, which is a real number. So in classical mechanics, an observable is essentially just a real number. However, in quantum mechanics, the situation is quite different. Since every quantum state, like a qubit, exists in a superposition of base states, the outcome of measurement is not deterministic, but probabilistic. We can represent a quantum state as a vector. Depending on the possible outcome, this leads to a projection of the quantum states onto the main state. For example, if M0 is a projection onto the horizontal axis, representing the main state 0, which is a unit vector, in the direction of the horizontal axis, then the outcome of the measurement is the unit vector 0. Similarly, if M1 represents the projection onto the vertical line aligning with the vector 1, then the outcome of the measurement is the unit vector 1, which the vector 1 is a unit vector in the direction of the vertical axis. This projection acts as a mapping from plane to plane, transforming vectors to vectors. It's a fundamental process in quantum mechanics, illustrating how quantum states change during measurement. If we aim for precision, we should describe it as a projection, which is a linear map from a Hilbert space onto itself. Further application of the M1 operator does not change the vector 1, because M1 is a projection operator. This demonstrates how certain operators in quantum mechanics can leave a specific states unchanged, highlighting the unique properties of the quantum states. In quantum mechanics, an observable is no longer just a real number. Instead, it is a linear operator that maps vectors to vectors. The output of this projection process is what we measure as an observable in quantum wave. The einstein gerlach experiment is a pivotal example of quantum measurement. In this experiment, neutral silver atoms are emitted from a furnace. Each atom has two possible discrete angular momenta or spin, exist in a superposition of two primary states, up or down. This setup demonstrates the simultaneous multi-state existence of quantum particles, a fundamental aspect of quantum mechanics. Using neutral silver atoms is crucial. It minimizes the large deflections typically observed in charged particles moving through a magnetic field, allowing the experiments to focus on spin-dependent effects. When these neutral silver atoms traverse an inhomogeneous magnetic field, their spin become definitely oriented in a specific direction. This orientation of a spin signifies the measurement process, where the spin of the electron is quantized into one or two possible states, up or down. The Schengen-Gerlach experiment vividly illustrates how quantum measurement can collapse a superposition into a singular observable state. The spin of the silver atom exists in the superposition of two main states, encoded as 0 and 1. This means it is a linear combination of 0 and 1. The M0 operator is the projection onto the horizontal line. The projection result is alpha 0. Consequently, the probability of observing 0 is the magnitude of alpha squared. The state of the system after measurement becomes the projected vector normalized by the scalar of the square root of the probability of observing the state 0. A similar scenario happens with projection onto the vertical line. The probability of observing 1 
is the magnitude of beta square. The state of the system after measurement becomes projected state which is beta 1 divided by the norm of beta. At the final stage, we observe 1, not some factor in 1. It means that phase factor is not observable. Because beta over the absolute value of beta is a complex number of length 1 and can be represented as e to the i theta. And we know that the length of e to the i theta is equal to 1. Despite its non-observability, the phase factor plays a crucial role in the underlying quantum states. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it enlightening and enjoyable. If you are interested in more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Your feedback helps us to create better content. Stay tuned for more exciting exploration into the world of quantum computing.